few weeks ago, I met the manager of a YouTube channel that hosts a Japanese version of Shark Tank. Hi, my name is Shane Pinnell. The name of my company is Sweep Easy. I'm seeking a $40,000 investment for 25% equity in my company. If you don't know it, Shark Tank is a reality show where contestants try to collect money from a group of investors to create a new business. The channel has gathered about 40,000 followers in just a few months, which is quite impressive for Japan. However, despite the quick growth, the manager of the channel appeared also to be a little puzzled by a different kind of information concerning his audience. There was in fact something off in the matrix. He tells me that almost the totality of the users are in fact men. To be precise, the 98% of viewers are male and only the 2% are female. 98 versus 2. These are results that you would maybe expect in porn videos where the audience is so strongly polarized depending on their sexual orientation and on their gender. But not so much in a reality show or business. And even if entrepreneurship is still strongly associated with masculinity here in Japan, it seems unlikely that almost no women would be interested in watching the show. So how come the channel is attracting only a male audience? The answer is quite straightforward. YouTube recommendation algorithm is suggesting the show almost exclusively to men. We cannot fully understand why this is happening since we don't have access to the algorithm itself. YouTube in fact keeps this algorithm as secret as possible. Yet, assuming that in this specific case the algorithm is not more functioning, there is another question that we need to ask. Is there anything problematic in the way this algorithm works? In other words, is there any ethical implication in the design of a recommendation system that appear to treat men and women so differently. Recommendation systems have become ubiquitous. They tell us what to buy, what movie to watch, what person to date, what restaurant to go, what news to read, and so on and so on. In few years, they have come to influence almost every aspect of our life and there is nothing inherently bad about them. If you think about it, in a world where we have to constantly navigate through an infinite variety of choices, recommendation systems legitimately help us and facilitate our daily life. Companies rely on this system since they help them to increase their profit, and indeed we as users rely on them since they make our life easier. Yet. When using these systems, we are not really aware of the possible ethical implication involved. A recent paper in the field of information ethics has tried to build a taxonomy of the different possible ethical issues involved in recommendation systems. First of all, we need a definition. Recommendation systems are functions that take information about a user preferences as an input and output a prediction about the rating that a user would give of the item under evaluation. These systems are usually based on collaborative filtering techniques. Collaborative filtering is a technique adopted to make predictions about the interest of a user by using data collected from other users. The idea is simple. If many users that like cats videos also like dog videos, then the system should recommend dog videos to users that watch cat videos. Now, it's difficult to define what a good recommendation system is. This in fact depends on the point of view that we take. For example, a recommendation system that is good for a user might not be equally good for the provider of the service. In the case of YouTube, from the point of view of a platform, a good recommendation system is one that makes users spend more time on the website, since this is directly connected to the revenue of YouTube. Yet, this might not necessarily be what users, for example, think a good recommendation system should do. Possible contradictions between the goals of different stakeholders might generate several kinds of ethical issues. 
Largely speaking, we can divide all the possible ethical issues that emerge in recommendation systems in two broad categories. Recommendation systems can either cause negative impact in terms of utility. This, for example, happens when a system recommends us something that does not really fit our needs or our interests. Or, recommendation system can cause a negative impact on us by violating our rights. This happens, for example, in the case of violation of our privacy. Now, the authors of the paper engaged into a very detailed analysis of every possible subcategory. And I indeed strongly recommend you to give a look at the paper if you're interested in knowing more about the ethical implications of recommendation systems. Here, I would like to focus only on the possible ethical issues that answer the question I have made at the very beginning of the video. What's wrong with an algorithm that ends up recommending a set of videos almost exclusively to a specific gender? I believe that such a recommendation system touches two different ethical issues at the same time. First of all, this algorithm might cause us an immediate negative impact in terms of utility. By in fact being gender biased, the algorithm might end up showing or hiding content to users just because of their gender. This is only a speculation, but it seems that women that might have been interested in watching the Japanese version of Shark Tank are simply not recommending the show. Or vice versa, men are recommending this show instead of something else because the algorithm classified them as men. Such an algorithm does not only negatively impact users, but also content creators, who might ultimately not be able to attract a specific audience due to this algorithmic bias. And this leads us to a second point. Algorithmic classification used to construct users' models could end up reproducing social categories. In this specific case, it seems that in the long run, YouTube algorithm might participate in reinforcing the gender dichotomy that is currently hegemonic, with the effect of obscuring what does not fit into such a dichotomy. This is not an immediate negative impact and has nothing to do with individual utility. The algorithm might actually work very well in recommending videos that fit our taste. However, it exposes us to a collective risk the risk of a more static society where the assumed social categories are automatically reinforced and where there is no exposure to different content. This could create a feedback loop where on the one hand users are constantly recommended videos that fit pre-existing social categories and on the other hand creators are rewarded to produce content that clearly fit these same categories. So ultimately content that polarizes the audience. This is a case of polarization based on gender, but political polarization is certainly another common example. We often think that all recommendation algorithms do is to track our tastes and adapt to them. However, they do much more than that. They actively participate in creating our individual and collective tastes, and on the long run, they actively participate in creating our identity. No provider would like to be regulated on this topic since any kind of regulation would ultimately hinder the performances of the recommendation system. Yet, considering what is at stake, it might be the time to have a serious debate about this issue. Thanks for watching, see you next time.